Welcome to this continuation on our chapter one coverage of molecules and numbers. In this video, I will teach you about significant figures. So there is always at least some uncertainty in the last integer of any value that you measure on a scale, for example, in the lab. So given that fact, whenever we take values that we measured and then multiply, divide, add, or subtract them with each other, the uncertainty within each value gets compounded over and over together to make the final answer even more uncertain. So to avoid this increased uncertainty, we follow special rules called significant figure rules, which I sometimes just call sig fig rules. Now, before getting into that, I have to tell you a very funny story. Ha ha ha. So one of NASA's historic mistakes was caused when a private subcontractor used pounds, which are American English units, instead of newtons, which are SI units. As covered at this HTML, which I'll link to in the description below if you like, we read the following paragraph. It says, the mission, the brains of the 1998 Mars missions NASA intended the MCO to serve the dual function of studying the Martian atmosphere and relaying radio signals from the two surface probes. The problem, in one of the all-time great engineering gaffes, NASA subcontractor Lockheed Martin created thruster software that used imperial units, that is American English units, the British pound, not the metric units used by NASA. NASA did not know this, never converted from pounds to newtons, and the probe eventually hit the atmosphere at the wrong angle and burned up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wasting taxpayer money is hilarious. <sighs> okay, my point here is that using SI units properly and interconverting between units using these significant figure rules can often be very important, especially if you're an engineer, physicist, or chemist, as well as biologists and other scientists. So let's make sure that we use them properly. So the first question we have to address in order to understand this whole thing is, how many significant figures are there? So to determine the number of significant figures in any given value, you have to read the number from left to right, starting with the first digit that is not zero. We then remember the following rules. Zeros that are between non-zero digits are always counted as significant. For example, the number 1,005 kilograms has four significant figures. So it's got some zeros in it, but the zeros here are between two non-zero numbers, one and five. So that means that the zeros are counted as significant. So I've got four digits here, one, two, three, four, all four of them count. It has four significant figures. By analogy, the number 7.03 has three significant figures. Got it? Zeros between non-zero digits are always significant. Number two, zeros at the beginning of a number are never significant. For example, this value 0.02 grams only has one significant figure. Only the two counts. The zeros that are to the left of the two never ever count. By analogy, the value 0.0026 centimeters only has two significant figures, the two and the six. All of these zeros to the left of the non-zero two, they don't count. Number three, zeros at the end of a number are significant if the number has a decimal point. For example, this value, 0.0200 grams, has three significant figures. Why? Well, these two zeros here that are to the left of the two do not count as significant because of rule number two. But the two zeros to the right of the two are significant because this is all to the right of decimals. Make sense? So this tells the reader that you had an apparatus that had the ability to accurately measure out these numbers. Okay, so the two here, the zero to its right and the other zero to its right all count as significant because they are to the right of a decimal place. Zeros to the left of a non-zero never ever count. Okay, so this term has three significant figures. By analogy, the term 3.0 does have two significant figures. The zero to the right of three actually does count as significant because it is on the right of a decimal. Being to the right of the decimal means it is significant because it conveys to the reader that the person who made this measurement had a device that was accurate to that decimalage. Make sense? Good. And four, exact non-rounded numeric relationships, that is definitional ones, have infinite significant figures. For example, by definition, one kilometer equals 1,000 meters. Now, if you stopped right there, Based on rules one through three here, you might think, hey, each of these terms just has one significant figure, right? Wrong. Because this is a definition, one kilometer equals exactly 
1,000 meters, you can arbitrarily add as many zeros as you want after the decimal place, and it's still true. In other words, you could also say that 1.000000 kilometers also equals exactly 1,000.00 meters. Or you could add as many zeros as you wanted to infinity and beyond past the decimal place, and it would still be true because it is an absolute definition. Thus, these type of absolute non-rounded definitional relationships represent terms that have infinity significant figures. To expound on this, here's my general rule of thumb. Relationships with infinite significant figures generally include any of the SI unit relationships that we covered earlier, specifically these prefixes. For example, one megaliter equals exactly 10 to the sixth liters with infinite significant figures. Now in contrast, relationships that do not have infinite significant figures include, as my general rule of thumb, any SI unit to American unit relationships. And the reason is because all of these involve rounding. For example, you might have learned that one mile equals 1.61 kilometers. Now, if you made the mistake of thinking that this was a perfect definitional non-rounded relationship, then you would think there are infinity significant figures here on both sides, but it is not. This term on the right is actually rounded. If you got more decimal places, you'll see that one mile actually equals 1.609344 kilometers, and there's even more numbers past that if you want to go even further. By analogy, you might see that one gallon equals 3.79 liters and make the mistake of thinking that, the, that this is a perfect relationship with infinity significant figures. Again, not so. If you look elsewhere, one gallon equals this number of liters. It has much more decimal places and it even goes further than that. Again, because these are rounded, you do not have an infinite number of significant figures. So when doing any of these SI unit to American unit relationships, I always count the number of significant figures as being the term that is rounded. For instance, in one mile being equal to 1.61 kilometers, you might be tempted to think, oh, the one here on the left only has one sig fig. Therefore, that is the significant figure limitation. My response is no, because we could add zeros after the decimal over here on the left. The thing that's being rounded is not the thing on the left here, it's the thing on the right. In other words, I could write down 1.000000000 miles is being equal to 1.61 kilometers, and it's the same statement. The limitation is not the thing on the left, it's the thing on the right, the thing that is being rounded. This now teaches us how to determine how many different significant figures a specific value has. Now that we know that, we will learn more rules on how to round anytime we add different terms together, or subtract them, multiply, or divide them. As it turns out, there are different rules for multiplying and dividing than there are from addition and subtraction. To begin then, whenever you are multiplying or dividing two or more values together, your final answer gets rounded to the same number of significant figures as the value that had the fewest number of significant figures. For instance, let's suppose I'm calculating out an area and I have these two measurements, okay? I multiply them together in my calculator and I get this value in meters squared, that's an area. Now, in order to avoid bringing a bunch of inaccurate numbers along, I have to round that answer. But where do I round? Well, because this is a multiplication problem, I have to round my final answer to have the same number of significant figures as whichever of these terms had the fewest number of significant figures. And which of these two has the fewest number of significant figures? Yeah, it's the 12.2. It only has three sig figs, whereas this term has four sig figs. So that means I need to round my final answer here to have the same number of sig figs as 12.2. In other words, this needs to be rounded to only have three sig figs, which would give me 67.4 square meters. Make sense? Now this rule contrasts with the adding subtracting rule. So when adding or subtracting, we round our final answer to have the same number of decimal places as the value that have the fewest number of decimal places. For example, let's pretend I'm taking this number, which has two decimal places, and I'm subtracting from it this number, which has three decimal places. Now, when I do that on my calculator initially, I get this answer. Okay, now I need to round this answer using my sig fig rules. How do I do so? Well, this was a subtraction 
So I need to remember my adding subtracting rules. Remember that rule is I round my final answer to have the same number of decimals as whichever term here had the fewest number of decimals. Which of these two has the fewest number of decimals? Yeah, it's the 25.37. It only has two decimals as opposed to the other term, which has three. So I need to round my final answer down here to only have two decimals, which would give us 19.76. Does that make sense? Good. Those are our sig fig rules. Now, if you feel confused, rest assured that I will do a number of problems that will be linked to in later videos dealing with these. Until then, thanks for watching, and please have a wonderful rest of your day.